Recently Xiaomi introduced of course the new Xiaomi 14 series but there was a phone there was a miss and it's the Xiaomi 14 Ultra and I know there aren't really any leaks out there as far as I know but these are my wishes when it comes to the 14 Ultra and what I would love to see on the phone even though most of them probably not very realistic. Anyway, let's jump into the video and talk about it. And to help visualize what I want for my Xiaomi 14 Ultra, of course I made a concept. Did a lot of concepts in the past, but not really anymore. But still, for helping me showcase what my wishes are for it, of course I made a little exception and made a concept for it. Just my own vision on something where I feel like this would really work while still retaining what we have on the 14 series as well. Now to begin with, when it comes to the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, I cannot not mention the Xiaomi 13 Pro, the phone that I've been using most of the time, next to of course my Vivo. But when it comes to this phone, what I really like about it is the camera capabilities. And that's something that they really want to focus on when it comes to these Ultra phones, the photography side of it, and videography to a degree as well. So when it comes to these kinds of phones, I feel that there are some changes needed. Now let's begin with the camera sensors themselves. I love the main sensor and I don't really want to change anything about it. I think it's actually really good and really well done by Xiaomi. But let's discuss the 3.2 time zoom. The one with the floating lens. I love it. Of course I love it. Because it's been great when it comes to having that capability to zoom into something and get that really nice close macro shot. But there's a bug. The sensor size inside it clearly isn't anywhere near the size of the main sensor and we're not going to make it a 1 inch sensor in my Xiaomi 14 Ultra wishlist. Now we're going to make it the same size as the main sensor on the Xiaomi 14 and Pro of course as well. A 1 over 131 inch sensor size. That will be fine and perfectly fine for this 3.2 times floating lens technology in the Xiaomi 13 Pro because that sensor is excellent. But sometimes, sometimes you will notice that you are dealing with a sensor that is smaller clearly than the main sensor and it needs an improvement when it comes to the sensor size itself. Now of course this same sensor I will also use for the ultra wide and the periscope because of course periscope will be there as well and a 5 times periscope for your portraits for instance would be good but I will say that the 3.2 times zoom on this one does excellent shots when it comes to portraits. Not too long ago, I think a few months ago, I took some photos with this and someone in portrait mode and it did a really, really, really good job. So when it comes to that, I don't think necessarily the 5 times zoom would be for portrait that much, but still it is a lovely addition to have. When for instance the 13 Ultra has that, I can definitely see a benefit for having a periscope next to the 3.2 times zoom. So a periscope is definitely needed, but also an upgrade in sensor size. So a 1 over 131 in sensor size for all, apart from the main sensor which stays a 1 in sensor. And of course when it comes to these cameras, we also have to talk about the aperture. Especially the main sensor and the telephoto are my focus. With the telephoto, the floating lens one, we're gonna have to put that a little bit different. I would say about an f1.4 would be great for it. This allows for a little bit more natural depth of field and therefore less artificial depth of field. This will probably help creating more of a proper shot with good depth of field. When it comes to the main sensor, the one thing I would say is that variable aperture is nice. But with that being said, a 1.4 to a 4.0 isn't enough of a step. While I would love that addition to my phone, I would say I want an f-stop of 1.4 to about a 10. This will allow for longer shutter speed shots, especially during daytime, unless you use those specific modes. But I feel like if you want to have proper manual control, yeah, proper f-stop would be great. So yes, an f-stop from 1.4 to 10. Talking about the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V, there are some things that I'm gonna steal for it and we're gonna start with a phone that is focused on photography, definitely needs a shutter button slash camera button, especially holding it like this and upside down like so, which I often do see my latest photography tips where I showcase how I capture my shots, but when it comes to 
having that button it is definitely beneficial because simply put you're not obstructing the view of your display when you are pressing the button itself even more so if you're looking down on the shot you're kind of obstructing the view and therefore it can be that you're seeing less of what you're trying to capture and i feel like a button there it's definitely beneficial not to mention it is kind of nice to have a soft touch when you are trying to get a focus point and then holding it properly or pressing it in properly to actually have the picture taken so definitely a camera slash shutter button is something that is a must and this is not where we're stopping when it comes to stealing what we have on the sony xperia 1 mark 5 and one of those things is micro sd support now i know People will be like, oh, why would you need a slower memory? But it's not always about speed, people. When it comes to cameras, for instance, you will often see that they have an SD card. Heck, I don't cannot think of any camera that doesn't have it. But what is the importance about it is that you can quickly switch between different mediums, allowing you to edit your pictures and then just have that focus on a shot. When it comes to a phone, for instance, connect it with your PC and you will see different folders and therefore it takes longer to load and everything to set up and so on. Having just an SD card, or in this case a micro SD card, is definitely beneficial. Not to mention if you want to upgrade your phone in terms of memory, you can just have a micro SD card in there. Either way, when it comes to my wishes for the Xiaomi 14 Ultra, yes, a micro SD will be in there. Realistically won't, but for mine, for mine it will be. And again, this is not where we stop when it comes to stealing from the Sony Xperia 1 Mark V and basically a lot of Sonys. It's the headphone jack. Now this is not only for audio and my own pleasure because I think audio definitely sounds better via 3.5mm headphone jack, especially if it's a DAC in there because it's definitely beneficial and you can tell if you buy a 100 euro wireless and a 100 euro wired the wired will sound far superior, but this is not where the story ends. That's just one part of it. When it comes to videography, you want to have good proper audio. And the 3.5mm headphone jack will give you that. Bluetooth simply won't. And that's no lie, that's simply a fact. Therefore, a 3.5mm headphone jack will also be in my wish list for the 14 Ultra. Now for the last edition, it's actually something that you see on the Mi 11 Ultra and that's of course the rear display that you already saw on some images when it comes to the rear display on the Mi 11 Ultra it's been beneficial for me having that has definitely been a huge help especially when I'm trying to create a shot of myself for for instance my travel vlog photography videos it has been really beneficial to be able to see what I'm capturing to be able to see if I'm in the shot properly when I'm talking to you. Therefore, for my wish list, this display will be added, even though it might not be the most realistic one because the periscope is of course below it and I'm not sure how much thickness this kind of display will take in. Either way, let me know what you think about my wish list for the 14 Ultra and what you wish to see for the Xiaomi 14 Ultra. Have a good one and talk to you guys in the next.